Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a wonderful Tuesday. Sorry, it's been a really busy couple days. Wrestling practice has now started 6 to 8. And I went to the gym with, with my wrestling teammates. It's fun. But I'm not going to let any excuses get in the way. I'm going to get my videos done for y'all. Because this is what is more important. This, this is what is going to live forever. The gospel, God's truth. Preaching about this is what is going to live forever. I think a lot of times we get caught up in the world and we forget about God. We forget about Him calling our name to just spend some time with Him. But I don't care what's going to come. If God is telling me to make a video tonight, I'm going to. I don't care if it's 9.30, 10 o'clock. I'm going to make it. I'm tired. But the Lord is more important than me just sitting on the couch or sitting on my bed just sitting on my phone and, you know, watching things. It's not going to work. I got to sit here and do things for y'all, for Jesus. But today we're going to be talking about a very important topic. Maybe you're struggling with decisions or faith and you're struggling with many types of things. You're not relying on Christ that much. I don't know if you're saved here that are listening. Maybe your relationship with Christ is drifting away. I ask you pray with me right now. We always pray before we get started and read some of God's word. Today we're going to be talking about some very important things, but before we get started, let's get into prayer right now. Jesus, I know we as human beings, we get caught up in the world th the worldly things of this world. And sometimes we just forget about just to spend some time with you for a little bit. But Lord, most importantly, help us to walk by faith every single day. Help us to share your word every single day. Help us to never quit. And Lord, help me never to quit for you. And Lord, I ask that you bless all of us here today that we understand what you're trying to teach us in Zechariah. Help us to understand it, to apply it to this nation. And Lord, help us to have a full heart for you, a full soul for you, full mind, and to never quit for you. For we are sinners. We are not perfect, but Lord, you are. Through your word and through everything that you do, you are perfect. And nothing can stop that. Help us to love our enemies, to forgive them. And I ask that if anyone here, Lord, is having struggles in their life, or their hearts are hardened, or they're struggling with something, Lord, I ask that you all get rid of it. And you guide them and you, they have trust in you. And Lord, help them to listen here because what you're going to teach us today is very important. And I ask this in your son. In Jesus' name I pray. Bless us. Amen. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I hope you're choosing God in all ways. And I hope you prayed that prayer with me because we all need prayer. Especially in this nation. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. So today I ask that you all open your Bibles, please. We're going to be in the Old Testament. We are going to be in Zechariah. Now, Zechariah is the book before, uh, yeah, it's before the book of, let's see, Malachi, I think. Yep, it's the before the book of Malachi. And Malachi is before Matthew, the, the first book of the New Testament. And today we are going to be in a very interesting topic about judgment. Now, I ask that you all go to Zechariah. We're going to be in chapter 7. And we're going to start off in verse 8. Verse 8, please. Chapter 7, verse 8. God's standard of righteousness. And this is what we need more in our nations. This is what we need more in homes and lives is we clothe ourselves in righteousness. When you come to Christ, if you clothe yourselves in righteousness and what God says, then it's harder to sin. I don't know if you all knew that. See, when you come to Christ, you have to turn from your sin. You turn from wickedness to righteousness. They're two different things, wickedness and righteousness. So you're over there in the wickedness and you are following that path, clothing yourselves in wickedness. 
but now you're clothing yourselves in righteousness. This is what God is asking for nations, for families, for groups, communities. This is what God wants. We're going to start off in verse 8, and it says, And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true, true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. Now, I want to talk about this verse right here. God tells us to execute. He tells us to execute true judgment. Now, before we get started, God wants us to execute to attack. Why does God want us to force laws and truth on people? Because he wants the nation to stay firm. He wants the group, to, the family to stay firm. See, this nation that we live in, United States, we, are, we were blessed. We are blessed with a constitution, which is judgment, which is executing judgment through the constitution. We've been blessed throughout the years in World War II. But now I look at the nation now and I see, I see that we are not executing true judgment. I see a lot of uh, politicians and a lot of government officials and I see um, a lot of people, they're not executing God. They're not executing true judgment. They are not willing to show love and show, judge, show truth. Because I'm telling you what, the Constitution was made for a reason. For people to honor it, to understand it. And I'm telling you for sure, the Constitution was made and helped by God. And it says here in verse 9, if we read it again, God tells us first to execute true judgment throughout the nations. He's saying that because he wants the nation to stay firm in his will. And then he says, and show mercy and compassion to every man to his brother. God says everyone in this nation that lives in this nation needs to show mercy and needs to show love. That is what God is looking for. He's looking for three things here. These are the three things, if y'all want to write it down, to make a nation, a family, good. One, you have to execute law, discipline, and judgment. Right? Two, you have to execute mercy, which is holding yourself back. And three, love, compassion. Now, people get mercy a little bit mixed up. God tells us to execute judgment, to execute law. So the reason why he says that is because people stay firm. People understand. People are willing to honor God's word. And if we put God's word into our homes and our nations and we execute it and we put it out there in laws, then that is what brings righteousness. If you want to have righteousness in your life, look to the Ten Commandments. Look to what God has to say to clothe ourselves in righteousness. Now, second, he tells us mercy. Now, mercy is you kind of don't attack in a way that people get mercy mixed up. People act like mercy is more of, um, you know, somebody just killed your killed your mom, for example, and then you have mercy upon them, um, and you d decide not to kill that person who killed your mom. You have mercy upon them. Yes, that's what mercy is, but mercy also means to hold yourself back from doing something wrong or evil. Now, what does this mean? If I, if I were to call somebody a name, right? Well, immediately I have to think of mercy. I think in my mind and I say, well, I don't need to fight back. Because I have mercy upon them and I don't need to attack. See, mercy is caring for... Caring for somebody even though they attack you in a way in their soul. They can attack you in many ways. And this is how a home works. This is how a, a country executes goodness. You know, we need to seek righteousness and mercy, God says. And then God says compassion. God says we need to love each other as a family, as a nation. We need to treat each other as respect and love our enemies. To go out there and show love and to to be caring for our Christian friends, to be caring for our American people, to be caring for this country. This is what God wants. 
God says, first, you have to execute my law and apply it to your life, apply my righteousness to your life. Second, you're going to have to willing to be hold back sin and just take it, even though you want to attack back. Because that's what strife and anger is. That is what violence is. If somebody were to call me a name, I would attack with violence back instead of just sitting there and having mercy and deciding not to, to attack them back. And then God tells us to love because when we love, then it will bring love back. God says this is what we need in a nation. This is what we need in homes. And verse 10 says, And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let not of your imagined evil against his brother in your heart. Now I want to talk about this verse too. God tells us in the verse half, Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger. God says, look, don't attack your enemy. Don't attack the ones who hate you. Don't attack people who are not like you. Because they're just as important as, as you are to God. See, I don't care if you're saved or not, people. God still loves everyone equally. It's just it depends if you're clothing yourself in righteousness. See, when you come to Christ, your punishment has been fulfilled. Fulfilled, I meant. It means that you won't be punished. You won't be thrown in hell if you're saved. But the ones that don't believe, God still shows love. God still shows compassion. God will still execute his judgment. God will execute his mercy upon them. But it's up to it's up to them if they want to have eternal life or eternal damnation. It's not up to God. See, God will sit there and love you, have mercy, warn you, but it's yourself that gets you into eternal damnation. People blame blame God uh, for uh, people, uh, God throwing people into hell for their bad choices. No, it's not God throwing you into hell. It's you throwing yourself into hell for your mistakes and for what you believe in. God says, don't oppress, don't attack other people. And then he says in the second half, and let not of your your imagine evil against brother in your heart. God tells us to not have violence, to have anger, any type of sin in our heart to do against somebody else. Now this kind of goes back to that verse that we just talked about, which was verse 9, was talking about mercy. God tells us that we can't imagine those evil things in our hearts because then we're applying violence. See, what wickedness is, it's violence. That, that's what wickedness is, it's violence, it's evil, it's strifeful, it's angry, it's jealous. And all these things are violent. And then sometimes God tells us not to, to have that wickedness in our heart to think violently against our brothers and our sisters and our family or in the country. If we applied all these verses in this country right now, this country will be completely changed. But the sad thing is that most people are lost. I'm telling you, Christian fellows, are you listening to me? I'm talking to all Christians here that are listening to me. It's getting too late. This nation is going to fall unless if we have an awakening of those three words I was talking about. I don't see in this nation people executing truth of God's judgment and of his love and his law and his word. I don't see it. And the Christians are just sitting in their home. And they're not willing to go out there and walk by faith and willing to share it. I don't see Christians, a lot of Christians who call themselves Christians, having mercy. Willing to say no to attack, to to be more like Jesus. I don't see a lot of Christians loving. I don't see a lot of Christians going out there showing compassion and love to their enemies and showing them to them. And God says if ever, if all these people would just do this, these three things, then there would be so much peace. This is what God wants for nations. He wants peace. He wants love. He wants you to clothe yourself in righteousness. This is what God wants. God doesn't, doesn't want us just, just to sit back in our homes and not go out or go around and execute judgment. No, we got to go around and execute and speak truth 
about mercy, love, and the law of God. And verse 11 says, but they refused to hear him. And pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears and they should not hear. Yet they made their hearts as an emote stone. Listen to that. God says in verse 11, they have refused to hear him. They have refused to hear judgment. They have refused to hear mercy. They have refused to hear love. And now they're just thinking evil in themselves. And verse 12 says, yea, they made their hearts as a, a melt stone, which is a hardened heart. They have hardened their heart in sin. They have hardened their heart in pride and evil. And that's all they've been doing is harden their hearts. And God tells us that when we come to him, we can't have a hardened heart. We have to, a hardened heart is thinking of evil things again. So we can't have a hardened heart. We have to have a heart of joy, peace, truth, and mercy, and love, God says. And it says, lest they should not hear the law and the words which the Lord, which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it came to pass that as he cried and they will not hear, so they cried, and I will not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. Listen to that. So God, God explains in verse 9, Look, if you ex execute my true judgment and my law and my word, if you execute mercy and love, then your nation will be filled with my spirit, my blessings, and my love. It will be filled with peace, and it will be a nation that you have never felt before. God tells us that right there. He tells us that if we do this, a change will occur. A nation will be at peace. But God says, if you don't hear me, my wrath will be upon you. So that's basically what's going to happen to the ones that don't believe. They ignored the executing of judgment. They ignored mercy and love. They ignored what God was calling them for. They did not hear and listen. And now God is going to punish them with hell and damnation and eternal fire. And listen to what God says. Now God is having wrath upon them right now in, in, in verse 12 God, God says in this last 12 he says this great wrath is coming but verse 13 says therefore it is come to pass right that as he cried and they would not hear so this this is the point that God has cried upon them to tell them to follow to tell them to understand to tell them to put God first in their lives to execute judgment and mercy and love God tells them over and over and they will not hear. But listen to what God says in the second. This uh, It says, So they cried and will not hear, saith the Lord of hosts. So listen to this. First, they ignored God. And now when God has put their wrath upon them, and now it's too late, God is going to ignore them. This is what's going to happen. This is the unforgivable sin, people. When you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you beg for mercy at the last minute and you're late. And it's too late. God's wrath is there. It's too late. God says, look, I ain't going to hear what you say. You should have heard me before. I gave you everything. I blessed you. I've warned you. But you, you should have heard me before. So now I'm not going to hear you. And now punishment's coming. And God says in verse 14, but I scatter them with the whirlwind among all nations whom they knew not. Though says the land was desolate. After they, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. There you go. They could have right here in verse 9. They could have had peace and been a strong nation, probably the strongest nation in the whole entire world, if they just listened to one request of what God told them. Just to listen to one request. That is it. But boom, they ignored it in their own pride. And boom, now their entire city has been desolated. And now they will be suffering with eternal punishment. This is what's wrong with America. And soon enough, people, that very verse at last 12, the wrath of God is going to be, come upon America. It's going to come upon other nations that are not listening either. And we'll be crying unto God. We'll be crying, but God will not hear. Because we haven't been hearing Him now. We haven't been hearing Him for a long time now. Maybe we were when we first started, but now we're drifting away from what God can do in us. So, so if you want a nation to flourish, 
If you want a family to flourish, if you want yourself to flourish, three words, execute, apply God's judgment, and honor His law. Have mercy and love for others, and don't Sorry, my fault, guys. My dad walked in and asked some questions. It's all good, but we're back. Um, the point is, is that th this is what God is warning our nation to do. And if we don't change, His wrath is going to come upon, and it's too late. It's too late. You had your chance. God has given you a lot more than just one chance. Sorry, I'm back, guys. Just have some trouble. Satan's walking in. Alright, guys. I'm sorry I'm busy doing things, but I, I hope y'all listen. I hope y'all understand that judgment needs, in God's law, His mercy and love needs to dwell in us in order for a peaceful nation to occur. I'm telling you people, I ask that we all go into prayer and that we apply this and that we share this people. If we want this nation to change, we better get onto it about the executing truth, true judgment, mercy and love. We gotta get onto it or the nation will be destroyed, God says. The nation will be destroyed, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is not no joke, people. Christians and the people are listening. This ain't no joke. This is not no joke. It's coming to a point where this nation is that close for God's wrath. That close for desolation. And, there, and there's no turning back from it. God has cried upon you for a long time. And you'll cry upon him when the nation's being destroyed. He won't hear you. Because you had all that time. You had all that time to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your entire life. You had all that time. God was warning you. And I'm telling you, if you don't make the right decision. Wrath will be upon you. And hell is very real. Hell was made for people who reject. That, that's what it is. Hell is a place for people to reject. God is calling you for peace. He wants you to have peace. But it's up to you to choose it. So I ask that we all go into prayer. Lord, I thank you for everything um, you've given us here. I know we got a little mixed up and um, interrupted a little bit here in this channel. Um, I thank you for your mercy, your grace. Help us to apply true judgment throughout this nation. Help us to apply love and mercy and to do good things for you, Lord. And I pray that everyone here goes out and shares it, that we understand it, and that this nation is getting at the tip of the spear for your wrath and desolation to come. And God, we need this nation to change now or it's going to come. And Lord, I ask that you do something in this nation. Lord, that you, have a, that you come in and just, just take it. And Lord, I, ha I ask the same thing not only for the nations, but for families and for people's lives. That they don't reject you, Lord. That they apply true judgment, mercy, and love. And don't imagine wicked things. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Thank you for blessing us and help us to serve you. Um, I hope in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I forgot to say. Sorry about that. Tired. 
very very busy day but i love talking to you guys about this just go out there and share it about executing true judgment and mercy and love because we're at the tip of the spear for this nation being destroyed and families and souls being destroyed and that's what satan wants satan wants the nation to be destroyed satan says you can have all the money and all this and all this yeah but only for the, for the temporary time people this is the point God will give you everlasting peace while Satan will give you just temporary peace. That is who Satan is. Now, is it actually peace? No, it's not. It's just destroying your life. That's what it is. And you constantly rejecting your life is uh, rejecting God. I meant you're, you're constantly destroying, you're, you're destroying yourself and you will destroy yourself forever when it comes if you don't repent. But God says, look, you turn to me now, the nation or the family or the person turns, boom, peace will be upon them if they execute my judgment and mercy and love. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Speak truth. Go throughout this nation. America needs a change.